Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode I continue development of my replica of the SpaceX BFR, the 2018 version of it. And in this video I intend to practice trying to get it to land safely at the KSC. Not on the launch pad, that would be very optimistic, but uh, just try to get it back and see if that's manageable. Just the booster section of it. As far as the ship is concerned, that's going to take a little bit more work. I've had a lot of trouble with its aerodynamics. So I think I've got a hypothesis on how to fix it. Basically moving the center of mass lower towards the heat shield of the BFS, the BFR ship. And maybe that'll allow it to hold the orientation it's supposed to have, but I've had trouble in general. Now as a basis for this, I used my Falcon 9 uh, script for the recovery. And that uh, didn't quite work out uh, for reasons that are obvious. This is a different craft. It also has a different amount of lag on it. And that's an underappreciated factor in this situation is the sheer lag involved in realism overhaul and bringing something this big back means that there's going to be inaccuracies. KOS can't respond at exactly the right time it's supposed to, for instance, to start or stop burns. And uh, on top of that, as far as starting burns are concerned, you saw right there, it takes some time to spool up the engines. They do not start immediately. They do stop immediately, thankfully, but they don't start immediately, and that has to be taken into consideration, among many other things. So before you all tell me how you saw somebody do it or you yourself did it in stock, let me explain the differences here. Uh, first of all, it is a larger planet. This is 10 times larger than Kerbin in one dimension, which means if you have an accuracy of within, let's say, 50 meters on Kerbin, you're talking about within 500 meters here. Uh, and that's optimistic given the other factors that are involved. Also, remember, it's 100 times the area. If it's 10 times in one dimension, it's 100 times in area. So it's a little bit hard to target things exactly. So. But that doesn't have anything to do with the problems that I face in this video and what I'm trying to do here. Uh, here I'm not even trying to be particularly accurate, to be honest. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get it to land safely. So that's uh, somewhat irre relevant. After I get to land safely, then we'll talk about getting it closer to, let's say, the launch pad. But it will be very much harder to do that here than in stock and uh, especially harder with it acting like this. You can see the retrograde vector drifting away and it's supposed to follow that and obviously keep it more or less straight up and that did not happen. Also the descent burn took fairly long so that wasn't quite right and we are an unacceptable distance away from the KSC. This explosion took quite a while. So there's that physics lag going to work again. And that really plays a part during the boost back burn. Because, of course, the boost back burn has to just go ahead and do it. And it doesn't have any real way of correcting that until it gets into a thicker part of the atmosphere. By which time it's too late to correct it too much. So the boost back burn has to be pretty accurate if you want to land directly on the launch pad, let's say. But with... The situation as it is right now, I'm lucky to get it within a few kilometers. Uh, maybe one kilometer. And you'll see that uh, when I have the landing guidance, I'll have chill landing predictions. And the variation in the landing predictions uh, that occur, which is a distance away from the KSC. And you'll be able to get a sense that with each frame, there's a certain amount of distance that it covers. And you can't really get... Uh, within that distance in accuracy unless you can get a better frame rate. So that's gotta be a problem. One potential solution to that problem is to make the engines in single unit parts so that we'll have an outer ring part, a middle ring part, and the inner cluster of seven and that will reduce part count and but not really the plume count so there's that downside but at least part count so that uh, we get better frame rates here. Here we have a fairly on target retro burn as far as the north south direction, but we're going long here, which means we've overcompensated for drag. And so I'll have to change that number and bring it in a bit. Uh, we, all, of course, have to compensate for drag during the boost back burn because otherwise we would fall short. If we uh, tried to have it aimed directly at the KSC during that, 
and of course the engine is off during the coast phase, then it's just gonna fall short. Now that actually might be somewhat more accurate because the landing sites I think are closer to the coast anyway. So I'll have to give that some thought. But uh, in my experience it generally ends up in the water in that case if you try and aim directly at the KSC. Here we go again. Obviously this burn is way too long and so as I progress I'm trying to cut down on it and encourage it to throttle a little bit more. See the throttle is all the way to the bottom here and of course that's not right. So adjusting for that will be helpful. This is way off and it's obvious that something about it aiming at the retrograde vector is wrong at that phase of flight. It's just not doing it properly. So I work to fix that. Incidentally, the retro burn at uh, 40 kilometers to 15 kilometers is absolutely necessary to prevent Ferrum Aerospace Research from destroying the vehicle. So I presume that that's realistic. So yeah, it is not optional. So here we are with another try and something else to point out about the landing phase, the last phase. Of course, the throttle range on these engines is not from 0 to 100%. It's actually from 20 to 100%. So when the gauge showed that at throttle down basically to the bottom end of it, that was not close to 0. That was close to more like 20% or a little bit higher. And that's something that you have to take into consideration when trying to write this kind of script in Realism Overhaul uh, because as far as KOS is concerned, it assumes that when it's throttling it's going from 0 to 100 unless you tell it different somehow. Okay, boost back burner again. It's really, really tough to get the RCS to point it in the right direction for ignition and of course here it takes longer than in real life. Uh, effectively what's happening here isn't that the RCS is turning the booster around. The RCS actually knocks it off to the side just a little bit so that the thrust from the second stage knocks the, the stage around. And that's what's actually happening here. Um, if the RCS didn't do that and we got away from the second stage before the RCS started turning it, it turned it so slowly that it wouldn't be able to make the burn in time. So that's another curiosity. These are not weak RCS by the way, these are 4 kN RCS running off of methane and oxygen. So not the nitrogen RCS on Falcon 9 either. One additional problem we face I think compared to real life is that I think the grid fins here are a little bit weak compared to their real life counterparts. And compared to stock we have one major deficit in that we don't have reaction wheels. There is no independent way for it to turn itself. Well, it doesn't look like I've fixed the orientation problem, does it? But there's no way for it to fix itself without either engine gimbling or RCS. So no happy reaction wheels involved here. But while reaction wheels would make certain phases a little bit easier, they're not really causing the problem that we're facing here. This is obviously a scripting error because the engine gimbling was active during that phase and it would have been enough to turn the rocket any which way and it was clearly just not being told to point in the right direction. So, once again, a launch. And of course with the lag it's very tedious to launch this, but I give it a go each time. I don't use a uh, quick save because um, when it separates that uh, there's an extra delay there and it causes problems. Also, um, I know that there is a way to get the KOS to hand off the script directly. Uh, people had told me that during my Falcon 9 recovery videos, um, but I just haven't implemented that into this yet. And so I just uh, started the script on the booster section manually each time. While the actual launch can be frustrating in the lag department, uh, it's always actually fun to watch it come down like this. It's very dramatic. I mean, one other aspect of how it works in Realism Overhaul versus stock is that it's much faster, right? Uh, the vehicle is going much faster as it's coming down. It's coming down at, uh, before it does the 40 kilometer retro burn, it's coming down at like 1,500 meters per second. And really, it doesn't take very long to get back to Cape Canaveral. You can see uh, the velocity of 1,300-ish. But yeah, it's very fast. 
and very dramatic at this point. Though not as dramatic as in real life, of course. So here we go again, and here we see that the engine is shut off. It is from 40 kilometers to 15 kilometers that that burn happens. It's altitude dependent. It is not uh, velocity dependent. And that's because it has more to do with the atmospheric density and making sure that uh, the atmosphere doesn't rip us apart than it necessarily is about anything else. Okay, this time we're right on the retrograde vector, so it seems like I've solved the problem so far. We'll see if it drifts. But no, when it seemed to have problems following the retrograde vector was when it crossed over and the retrograde vector was no longer facing east. The retrograde vector started going over to the west and then it couldn't quite follow it. And so that's just a math problem going on there. There's uh, the way that the retrograde vector is being calculated. Uh, what's happened here? Aha! Well, we definitely came down hard. Negative 12 meters per second, I think it was. Um, but it seems like we only lost the landing legs and the engines are holding us up. Which is sort of what happens in real life, not exactly. Uh, but, uh, well, it's an option. One interesting point is you'll note that we're landing with a surplus of fuel. The launch script itself is identical to the one that I did my previous video about BFR with, and so we know that the ship can go to orbit while reserving this amount of fuel, and in fact can do much more than just orbit while reserving this amount of fuel. Uh, we were actually trying to get it directly to the moon. So, but we were falling short on that lunar burn, remember, in that video. So, if we can stop the, the BFR booster a little bit later, that'll improve our margin for the moon. And it does look like we can stop it later. Every time we've had plenty of fuel left to spare, like a thousand meters per second of delta V on the ground. So, that is a consideration, and that will help, of course. Uh, of course, it won't give the second stage, the BFS, a thousand meters of delta V extra, but it'll give it some. And that's one motivation for doing this part of the development. Of course, it's not really useful to bring back the booster if you're intending to conduct the mission, because uh, once the vessels are outside of render range, KOS can no longer control the other one, and we're basically going to be leaving it to float, and it won't make orbit if we follow this down. And I am aware of FMRS and that that mod can allow us to do both effectively. But basically my goal here isn't to always bring back the booster every time I do a mission. As exciting as that might be, um, my focus will be on the missions while doing the missions. But I am interested in seeing exactly how much fuel I need to reserve to make these return to launch site landings happen so that I can maximize the amount of fuel available to the BFS. When you think about the tedium of doing the refueling trips to fill it up for the actual Mars mission, it'd be best if we don't have to do more refueling trips than we should. Uh, more refueling trips than the real thing ought to. So that's one motivation here. So this seems a little bit closer to the KSC, but I haven't really been working on that aspect of it too much still focused on the landing and here it's a uh, nice and vertical right there but it's taking too long to get to the ground and that retrograde vector is still drifting away and the fact that it's taking too long to get to the ground means that it started to burn too early after all it can only throttle down so much it's not shutting off the engines because not only does it have limited ignitions remember the engines take time to spool up so if it tried to shut down the engines it would not survive that not that it survived this either but uh, it would definitely not survive that because the calculations would be completely thrown off. Obviously there has to be a factor in the landing script that takes into account that the engines take time to start up and so that complicates matters a little bit and you can't just use like the equations of motion and hope that you get the exact timing right because you won't. Not only, I mean, if you manage to build in drag into the equations of motions that's great, but you still have these interesting quirks like engine ignition to worry about. One other thing that I wonder if it's a problem is just the sheer height of the BFR. 
Where is it measuring the altitude from? Is it measuring the altitude from the bottom of the vehicle or more likely from the controller at the top of the vehicle? If it's measuring from the controller at the top of the vehicle, that might lead to problems as far as estimating when it should be doing the burn and what kind of throttle it needs to use. But anyway, here we are coming down again. Now, this return caused me to scratch my head because we've been pretty good about the north-south aspect of this. We were just going a little bit too long. We should be closer to the beach. But this time we were way far north and also it seems to be correcting in the wrong direction. It seems to be actually pointing in a way that uh, makes it want to go further north. And so that left me scratching my head. And basically that's why I made this one the last one of my tests for this video because I have a lot to figure out. It's getting close. It's getting close, but there are certain behaviors about how it's correcting itself that I don't quite understand. And especially that bit where it was tilting away from the KSC during that uh, retro burn. Okay. Headed through the clouds. Really far away from the KSC this time. That got me confused because that's down to the boost back burn. And the boost back burn didn't really change. So why are we so far in the first place? Okay, and now the landing burn. The plumes are initially splayed out, by the way, because they're trying to manage roll. The script prefers it in a particular orientation, which is fine. It corrects that pretty quickly, as you can see. But again, a little bit too early. Now, you have to watch out for that because... It seems a lot earlier than it actually is because of the lag, because there's physics lag. It's not actually as long a time as you might think. Well, here again we had the situation with the landing struts blowing up, but the engines holding the rocket. I wouldn't say steady. Uh, I felt a need to apply SAS pretty quickly, but it is what it is. I don't know about those landing struts. I might increase their um, braking tolerance because they seem to be quite weak for this purpose, but we'll see. Obviously the landing is too hard, so I can't quite blame them. But still things to fix, and so this is my progress here. The situation with the BFS uh, returning from orbit is, I would say, worse. This is actually better results than I've gotten with that, but I am working on it, if you were wondering and the struggle continues. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.